Steve Kerr's lifestyle, the man who saved Michael Jordan's career. Jordan did not have the shot. Kerr just did it. Steve Kerr's accomplished everything as a player and coach, from playing with Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls to leading the Golden State Warriors to four championship titles. However, his personal life and style of living aren't what one might expect. Watch this entire video to find out how Steve Kerr and Michael Jordan's relationship changed after Jordan almost knocked him out. When discussing the achievements of the NBA champions Golden State Warriors, all eyes are naturally drawn to Stephen Curry, Draymond Green, and Klay Thompson. Still, there's one more name that's as equally important, Steve Kerr, the genius behind yet another fantastic squad that he's guided to victory for the fourth time. Before this, he already had five rings as a player, demonstrating that he's not only a wonderful coach, but also a spectacular player, despite his lack of excellent personal statistics. Unlike what we're used to, Kerr has discovered his niche in San Francisco, understanding how to handle a bunch of players who have become a family, without egos, with a collective spirit, and an unquenchable desire to make history. Kerr respects his players and works hard to establish a peaceful environment in the team. Therefore, this is a team with very few controversies. But what made Kerr so humble and down to earth? His experiences shaped his personality as a child dealing with sorrow, early life, and tragic childhood. Steve Kerr was born in Beirut, Lebanon on September 27, 1965, as one of four children to Anne, Nay Zwicker, and Malcolm H. Kerr. He has two brothers, John and Andrew, as well as a sister named Susan. Since the 1920s, his family had lived in Beirut. Stanley and Elsa Kerr were his paternal grandparents. His father, Malcolm, was a professor at the American University of Beirut before becoming its president. Kerr spent much of his childhood in Beirut and other Middle Eastern cities. Before going to America to attend Palisades High School, he attended the Cairo American College in Egypt and the American Community School in Beirut, Lebanon, now Palisades Charter High School. He developed a keen interest in basketball while there and played for the Palisades Dolphins. Steve admired his father a lot, but on January 18, 1984, Malcolm was killed by a Shia Lebanese militia known as Islamic Jihad. Malcolm was just 52 years old when this tragedy occurred. He was shot in the head from behind in a college corridor using silenced pistols. This completely devastated Kerr, as he explained how, before this tragedy, he'd assumed that bad things only happened to other people. Steve Kerr was away at college, playing for and representing the University of Arizona. Kerr was in his dorm room when he learned about his father's death. So I received a phone call in the middle of the night from a family friend, Kerr said. My phone rang in my dorm at three o'clock in the morning, so I knew something was up. He just said, Steve, I have terrible news. So yeah, basketball was the one thing I could do to take my mind off of what happened. So I went to practice the next day. I didn't know what else to do. Steve Kerr's life was drastically altered that day, and he's now a strong advocate of gun control. Stanley Kerr, his grandpa, was a dedicated volunteer, social worker, and humanitarian. He participated with Near East Relief and was actively working there after the tragic Armenian genocide. Stanley assisted women and orphans in Marash and Aleppo in finding safe havens. Then he intended to settle permanently in Beirut with his family. This devastating tragedy humbled Kerr, and he challenged his rage into passion, earning a name for himself in the world and a net worth of, well, did you really expect us to announce it this early? Nah, fam, you'll have to stay patient and keep watching the video because you never know when we'll reveal it. Professional career. Kerr wasn't a popular high school prospect and finally went to the University of Arizona to seek a degree in general studies. He was accepted into Arizona's basketball program, the Arizona Wildcats. During this time, he genuinely evolved as a player and garnered the attention of NBA scouts. Kerr played five seasons at Arizona from 1983 to 1988, appearing in 129 games and averaging 11.2 points per game. He was a part of the United States basketball team that won the gold medal in the 1986 FIBA World Championship in Spain. He earned a Bachelor of General Studies from Arizona two years later, with a focus on history, sociology, and English. Steve Kerr was selected in the second round of the 1988 NBA draft after becoming available. On March 11, 1989, he made his NBA debut in a game against the Milwaukee Bucks, which the Suns eventually lost. He was moved to the Cleveland Cavaliers the next season, where he spent three seasons until being traded to the Orlando Magic for the 1992-93 season. The Bulls struggled throughout his first two seasons with the franchise, which was still missing Michael Jordan after his initial retirement. 
They went on to win the NBA title the next year and the two years after that. Kerr scored the game-winning jumper against the Utah Jazz in the 1997 NBA playoffs and after getting an unbelievable pass from Jordan. Steve Kerr joined Turner Network Television, or TNT, as a television commentator shortly after his retirement in 2003. He briefly left broadcasting after becoming the Sun's general manager, but he returned to TNT during the 2010-2011 NBA season. Kerr became the new owner of his previous franchise, the Phoenix Suns, in 2004. He was named the franchise's new general manager in June 2007. However, the Suns remained one of the NBA teams without a championship win, as they still are today. The Golden State Warriors head coach. On May 14, 2014, Steve Kerr was appointed head coach of the Golden State Warriors. The Warriors finally won their first NBA title in 40 years when they defeated the Cleveland Cavaliers in the NBA playoffs. After experiencing back pain during the 2015 NBA Finals, Kerr underwent back surgery in July 2015. The Warriors proceeded to the NBA Finals that season when they met the Cavaliers once more. Kerr's Warriors beat the Cavaliers in the NBA Finals in both 2017 and 2018. Kerr's Private Life After six years of watching Steve Kerr, it always looks as though he knows just when to say the correct thing. The Warriors head coach has an incredible ability to strike the appropriate tone at the appropriate time. From afar, he looks to be the most humble person ever. Kerr's always present when a life-altering event takes place in our country or around the world, stating exactly what needs to be spoken at that moment. Steve Kerr, a five-time NBA champion coach, and his wife Margot Kerr met on a blind date and married some years later. Margot Kerr was up in a tiny town in Ohio and had a quite ordinary life. Her mother pushed her to study and achieve her dreams. Their two children both play college sports, and their daughter Madeline works with the Warriors as an assistant player development coach. Margot is both a lecturer and a published novelist. Okay, now for the bit you've all been waiting for. Steve Kerr's net worth. Michael Jordan's former Bulls teammate has accumulated a big fortune. Let's take a look. Net worth. Steve Kerr, the coach of the Golden State Warriors, has a sizable net worth. He earned a total of $15.8 million throughout his NBA playing career. That equates to nearly $24 million now. His biggest pay as a player was $2.625 million earned during his final season with the San Antonio Spurs in 2002 and 2003. In 2014, he signed a five-year, $25 million contract with the Warriors, paying him $5 million each season. In July 2018, he agreed to a contract renewal, and while the specifics weren't released, it's thought that the arrangement didn't change much in terms of pay. We all know Steve Kerr is known for his humble attitude. But who reacts to a punch in the face the way this man did? What exactly are you, Steve? Michael Jordan punched Steve in the face. Jordan was well known for not trusting his teammates. So how did Kerr get his confidence? Jordan and Kerr got into a fight during a session in 1995. Jordan responded by hitting Kerr in the face. Kind of like Draymond throwing a haymaker at Jordan Poole. <laughs> Too soon for jokes? So what caused this to happen? Two colleagues being so furious that they fight may seem strange to the typical NBA spectator, yet it happens all the time. The Bulls were scrimmaging at the time, and Kerr was guarding Jordan. Jordan was enraged after a series of no calls from the Bulls' famous coach, Phil Jackson. So one day at practice, Phil put Steve Kerr guarding me, Jordan said. We're on opposite sides of the scrimmage, and he's talking all kinds of trash, and I'm pissed because we're getting our ass kicked, Kerr explained. Michael Jordan is the ideal competitor, inciting fear in both opponents and teammates. But Steve Kerr wasn't about to give in to him or anybody else, even if it meant receiving a punch to the face. I have a lot of patience as a human being, but I tend to snap at some point because I'm extremely competitive too, Kerr said. I'm just not really good enough to back it up usually, but I'm gonna fight. From 1991 to 1993, the Chicago Bulls won three consecutive championships. On July 23rd, 1993, the unimaginable occurred. James Jordan, Michael Jordan's father, has gone missing. He's later discovered killed. This horrific incident resulted in Michael Jordan's first retirement from the NBA. Unfortunately, both Michael Jordan and Steve Kerr's fathers had to be separated from them. But when Jordan learned about Steve's tragedy, the two formed a connection.